and I'm a director of Tobin Consulting Engineers. Um, I've worked with uh, a number of the projects that you see this morning uh, as a project manager. Not all of them, but some of them. Uh, there is a, a large team within Tobin's that deals with a lot of the projects that, are, that we've done here in the sports campus over the years. Uh, some of my colleagues at the back there will be accompanying you on the tour, so make sure that you single them out and ask them plenty of hard questions. As I said, in Tobin's we, we do a lot of different things uh, in, in the engineering world. We're water services, we're building an infrastructure, we're energy and environment. There are three main divisions. One of the things that we like to think about ourselves, uh, and I think most engineers would like to think about themselves, is that we try, we obviously do all our technical stuff, that's very, very important, we do that as well as we possibly can. But in the end, when you're finished a project, to look back on it and say, this is something that has improved the quality of life for the general public, for people in general. Uh, and certainly, we're very, very proud to be associated with the National Sports Campus because I think that project, this project in particular, emphasises that aspect of our work. We're uh, looking at not only setting up uh, facilities here for professional bodies, but also uh, facilities that can be used by the general public for sports. And uh, it's, a, it's a campus that I think not just we are proud of, but the whole country should be proud of, and certainly Sport Ireland should be proud of. Um, also today we have with us uh, Nick Marshall from KSS, who is the architect on the National Indoor Arena, which is one of the facilities that you'll be seeing this morning, and you'll, you'll see it's quite spectacular. Uh, we'll be joined later by Oren McCluskey, who was the project manager for Heron Buckingham Joint Venture, who were the contractors for, of that particular facility, and I hope you ask them plenty of hard questions too. I certainly have in my time. Uh, the speakers that we have this morning, Caroline Spillan, from, uh, who's the Director General of Engineers Ireland, and Caroline will expand on what I've spoken about there, the, the fact that engineering spans a whole range of aspects. It goes way beyond just the technical uh, performance of, of projects. Uh, we're delighted also to have uh, Owen Clifford here this morning. Uh, Owen is a three times, three times world champion? Four. Four times world champion, excuse me. <laughs> Four times world champion. Olympic athlete and uh, bronze and gold, winner, uh, gold uh, medal winner uh, in his event. And we have also David Conway, who's the director of uh, National Sports Campus uh, and Sport Ireland, the man that we have to keep happy uh, in our work here. And I hope we've done so, Dave. So far. So far. <laughs> There's room yet. So um, I'll introduce our, our first speaker, Caroline Spillan, uh, to address you from Engineers Ireland. Thank you to Tobins for inviting me to uh, speak this morning and also to Sport Ireland. Uh, this is a great opportunity. Um, it's an absolutely impressive uh, campus and I'm really looking forward to the, uh, the tour that we're going to do. Um, I love all kinds of sport. I, I, uh, I have participated in some aspects, but I love watching uh, sport of all kinds. Um, but I'm not any kind of an aficionado or uh, any kind of an expert. But um, uh, the opportunity to come close to the kinds of facilities that are exhibited here this afternoon is going to be really, or this morning is going to be really great. Um, and it'll really give all of us an opportunity to understand and see firsthand how we can prepare elite <coughs> sports athletes to compete on the world stage. And I think we're going to hear a lot about that this morning. Um, I'm, I'm very clear though on, on one thing, and I suppose that's on the everyday work that engineers do um, in the and their growing prominence I suppose in the uh, uh, design of cutting edge performance um, uh, uh, facilities and technologies to assist in uh, 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 sporting endeavors and I suppose what is becoming really clear now I would hope to the general public and you'll have the benefit of seeing it here this, this morning is the link between engineering and sport I suppose it isn't exactly obvious uh, I suppose it is obvious when you when you look at the kinds of facilities that engineers support uh, the development of but um, I suppose when you look at things like um, mechanical biomedical and electronic engineering and you see the link between those disciplines of engineering and the preparing of uh, as uh, athletes for their various different endeavors and you can see how those technologies all work together with um, all of the efforts and the training and nutrition of uh, athletes and you can see what the role and contribution of engineering is to all of that and I think that's the real benefit of uh, things like uh, site visits that happen during engineers week it gives you 
the opportunity to, to come away from the classroom to see how the application of some of the things you've been learning actually plays out in practice, to get the opportunity, as has been said to you today, to go and ask uh, questions about why things have been designed in various different ways and how things work. And it gives you a really good example of the practical application of engineering disciplines in the various different aspects of, um, well, today we're here to talk about, about sports. I suppose so for many people working in sports is a dream come true and um, seeing today how engineering innovation and technology can combine with sports to produce our own world class athletes is a valuable way of showing the diverse nature of the modern engineer. Uh, technologies which stimulate the main muscle groups to support elite exercise, data analytics, uh, that evaluate an athlete's performance to support improvement, engineering infrastructure that helps athletes to recuperate quickly. These are all avenues where contemporary engineering skills now play a pivotal role. Um, Engineers Week uh, has been running for the last 11 years and this year we're going to have over 700 different events all around the country um, and they are wide and varied. I was in NUI Galway at the very beginning of the, of the week and we were, uh, there was a naming ceremony there for uh, one of the, engine the engineering building and it was a naming ceremony for the first female engineer to graduate out uh, um, in engineering out of, the, out of Ireland and the UK came out of NUI Galway. And even just more recently, I see NUI Galway have a PhD student who is assisting on a, a mission to do with Mars. So uh, fantastic, um, uh, fantastic facility and fantastic learning track record over in NUI Galway. My colleague and I were in down with Dell and with the University of Limerick yesterday. <coughs> Again, a whole range of different activities happening there, all related to engineering. So I suppose the, the message for Engineers Week has got to be that um, engineers are, are really um, desperately needed for economic and social development in Ireland. Uh, there are um, absolutely you know, huge variety of careers that are possible out of studying a basic engineering degree. Um, clearly what you need to do is you need to leave yourself open to exploring the possibility of engineering by studying STEM subjects at uh, second level, so science, technology, engineering and maths, and obviously a lot of you will be involved in that. And our, 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 I suppose our ask for people during Engineers Week is to give consideration to engineering as a career, uh, give consideration to studying engineering, and that can be all kinds of different pathways to it at uh, third level because it really is a passport to a great career, it's a passport to the world because engineers that graduate out of Ireland are recognised internationally um, and it's a, it's a passport to a whole range of different um, opportunities for areas of work and it allows people uh, to work in highly technical roles but also roles that have maybe more of a, um, a social element as well. Um, and you don't really discover these things until you actually look into the possibilities of the careers. So um, events uh, like this, this morning is very important for Engineers Ireland. We're very enthusiastic about them. It's a great opportunity for us to go out and meet students and understand what their experience is. And um, again, just to conclude, I'm, I'm very thankful to, to Tobin's and to uh, the <coughs> campus here for allowing us the opportunity to, to participate in a wonderful celebration of this facility. Thank you. Firstly, I'm uh, delighted uh, to have been invited here today by uh, Tobin's company. I, I suppose know for a long time, and uh, some of my uh, good friends are working in Tobin's. And uh, I'm also delighted to be here at the National Sports Campus because over the last number of years, I've had uh, an opportunity to use many of the facilities on the campus, and I've also had an opportunity to use a lot of uh, top international facilities abroad, including in in the States, across Europe, in Rio. And you know it's fantastic to see the level of infrastructure and sporting facilities that we've managed to build here in Ireland and how, how well it stacks up against what is available internationally. But today maybe I just wanted to just talk about, I suppose I'm an engineer uh, by trade or maybe a cyclist by trade, whichever way you want to look at it. But actually, as it turns out, the two of them are very compatible. And I suppose it's when I qualified as an engineer, I never knew how good that degree would come, uh, would be for me when it went into competing at international sport. I'm going to focus on cycling and you may not believe it but in my daily training the role of every almost every type of engineer will come into um, my daily training. So 
On the left hand side, for example, uh, you have mechanical, civil, aeronautical engineers that look at the performance of uh, cyclists in terms of their aerodynamics. So how do you make cyclists faster? On the very top you can actually see the time trial bike or road in Rio, which will be worth maybe 10,000 euros. That is produced by a company called Cervelo, a Canadian company. And it's so engineered, that particular bike, it weighs, uh, the frame of it weighs about 700 grams, okay? It's extremely aerodynamic, but the lead engineer who works with Cervelo, she was actually headhunted just after Rio by NASA uh, to work in their aerospace division. Simply because, as an engineer, being able to model something like a bike is actually one of the most complicated uh, pieces of equipment you could model for aerodynamics, believe it or not. Electronic engineers, well, modern bikes, a lot of my, my, all my race bikes now have completely electronic gears. That's all designed, developed by um, electronic engineers really sophisticated pieces of equipment that have to, I suppose, endure all types of weather conditions, you know, and they have to, the batteries have to last long enough and be light enough such that you can do a full, maybe 200 kilometer race with them. And then it goes all the way down to training. So believe it or not, and I suppose this shows the professionalism of uh, what happens uh, here in Sport Ireland and with Cycling Ireland as well. Almost every aspect of my training is monitored by sensors developed by engineers. So when I go out training, um, for example, last year during training camps in New York on the road, we would have a car following us, and that car is reading in real time using sensors on my bike, my heart rate, the power output, my respiration rate, so how fast I'm breathing, how fast I'm going on the road, how fast I'm climbing a hill, and if I'm slacking off, my coach can tell me in an earpiece to uh, go faster or slower, if I, or well, it's normally to go faster if I can. <laughs> but these sensors are highly engineered pieces of equipment. Uh, they weigh, they have to be very small, they have to be very robust, and there's a huge amount of engineering that goes into those. So you can see that engineers, just in my sport, and this cuts across all sports, have a huge role to play in high performance sport. Uh, not only that, but then we have the area of sporting infrastructure. Um, so on the left hand side, you can see uh, the National Rowing Centre, which is in Cork. Some of you may or may not be aware of that. Uh, for example, I've shown Connacht GEA, which uh, their national centre, which is in Mayo, which I believe Tobin's might have uh, uh, built. And then you have various facilities in UL, so Monster Rugby, for example, train out of UL, and they have a 50 metre pool there. So these, again, there's large sporting infrastructure, not just in Dublin, but all across the country, again, which engineers would have a huge uh, role in developing. But actually, the next two slides, maybe I'm just going to go slightly away from that to an area I'm particularly interested in. And I think Caroline mentioned there that engineers have a broader impact than just uh, the technical uh, part as well. And I think there's a huge role for engineers in solving uh, societal problems. And a lot of these things, maybe you don't think about the engineer's role in, in these areas, but I've just shown here a couple of greenways and cycling lanes. And you know, most, a lot of the problems that we have, I suppose, uh, you know, throughout the world go to things like health, transport problems, carbon emissions and all that. And I think engineering is actually probably the discipline that is most suited to solving all those problems. Something as simple as a, a cycle lane, for example, cuts carbon emissions, makes people healthier, and also cuts down uh, uh, traffic jams inside of cities. Another area which I'm really interested in is how do we get people more active and engineer a more active environment? And again, I think engineers are the key people in promoting health throughout society and making the living environment, so the environment we all live in, a place which is better, uh, both in terms of health, uh, in terms of, like, uh, I suppose, emissions, which is more sustainable. So you've very, what might seem like very simple things like the outdoor gyms that you are beginning to see pop up all, all over the country. And I think they're a really important piece of infrastructure uh, for communities. To a project we did with Galway City Council where we looked at how close people were to different types of facilities. So can we build cities and urban environments and make people closer to various facilities such as schools, shopping centres, so that they don't need to use their cars, so that they can walk, that they can cycle. And the more we can get people into an active environment as engineers, I suppose the better or the more we will help society. And again, various engineers, engineering disciplines have roles to play in this. And for me, this is why it's such an exciting career because uh, I suppose you know, we all love the technical part of engineering, but engineering is one of the major careers where you can see an impact on broader society as a degree. So I was just going to briefly finish today uh, by, I suppose, 
uh, pushing the fact that I think hopefully the next large piece of infrastructure that we might see on this campus is the velodrome. I was lucky enough last year to race, uh, or in 2015, to race in uh, Japan. Uh, I actually missed the birth of my daughter while I was racing in Japan as well. But this was the velodrome we raced in, in a town called Izu. And you might, I suppose everyone could agree, it's probably in a stunning location. In the background you can see Mount Fuji. And uh, so I was racing in uh, that particular velodrome. But the velodromes themselves, they're, you know, I think uh, could be a massively important part of this uh, national campus. And I do hope and believe it is on the cards. And it's not just for cyclists. I mean, these facilities are multi-purpose. But I think if you look at the facility there on the top left in Izu, they're also beautiful buildings. They're highly engineered structures. They're really beautiful buildings. And hopefully we will see one on this campus soon. Uh, so again, I'd just like to thank uh, Tobins for inviting me here today. And I'm delighted as part of Engineers Week uh, to have the opportunity to uh, present, I suppose, the link between engineering and sport. So thank you again. Good morning, everyone. Caroline, you're very welcome here from the National Sports Campus and Owen as well for your presentation. And also on behalf of Sports Campus, congratulations on the success. And I think before we leave, I think every secondary, every student here today should just put your hand on this and just feel the weight of it and what could be achieved with the facilities that we are providing here. And to tell Owen, we have planning for a velodrome. We just need to go out there and actually try and develop it uh, and get financial funding on it. Okay. David Conway is my name and uh, my job really here is one of either passion, love, uh, in terms of developing facilities at the National Sports Campus. So what we have on the National Sports Campus is a 500 acre site that we have developed for National Sports Campus for facilities. We equip it, we maintain it, we operate it, and we get people to use it. Okay. So out of the group here today, how many people here have actually visited the National Sports Campus or used the National Sports Campus? Hands up. Fantastic. So some of the statistics that we're doing at the moment and usage of the facilities that we have. The National Aquatic Centre, and you'll see it down here in the blue section, and I'll play a video later on. National Aquatic Centre, we had a, over a million footfall last year on its usage. So that was December, first week in December, we had over a million people use the facility. Right? Our GA facility, 35,000 this year, in a, in a calendar year up to now, we've used that from all over Ireland. We have 4,000 members in the gym. We do 3,500 people doing swimming, diving, and gymnastics at the moment. And you'll see the gymnastics center later on. And in there, we're going to try and drive another 1,000 or 2,000 people using that. So the statistics and the usage of the National Sports Campus has actually grown and grown and grown. But this has kind of come and it's very really two stages, and this is where you need to be careful in terms of, we have an architect up there today uh, from KSS in terms of, the architects kind of do the nice pictures, if I could say that to the engineers, without, <laughs> without affecting the, the engineers, all right? Or the architects and so on. But then what happens with the engineers is that they give the actual, the nuts and bolts from a structural point of view of how it op operates and how it works. Okay, thank you very much, Dave. Um, do, do anyone want to ask any questions of any of our speakers? Everything was perfectly understandable. Could I just ask you to explain in terms of uh, Tobin Consulting Engineers, as where do you come in in the, in the entire project? We, if we start with a sort of a greenfield site and there's a vision to, yeah. to, to build this, this amazing facility, where do Tobins come into the process and what, would, what is their role? As okay. Such? Well, it, each of each of the uh, projects it, it are standalone projects. There, there isn't one single national sports campus project. So where we come in at the start is we have to actually tender for the work for a start. So it's a comp each each project is a, is a competition. Um, what we do is we fulfil the role of what's called the employer's re uh, representative. Okay, so we are the interface between Sport Ireland and the people that build the projects. So we, we project manage. In some cases we do design. In some cases we do specimen designs. And then, so for example, in the National Indoor Arena, we would have done the initial layouts, got the planning permission for, uh, for Sport Ireland. We're working with Sport Ireland throughout all of this. And then uh, the contractors here in Buckingham would have come along with KSS and they would have done the design build part of it. So they would have done the detailed design, the structural detail design, and we would have project managed that and, and acted on behalf of Sport Ireland. So that's, that's generally how these things are done. Yeah. 
okay? Okay, we'll, just, we'll start our tour in a couple of minutes. Just before we go out there, uh, there's Wi-Fi available throughout the campus. So we just have a couple of prizes for two things. One is the best photo that you can gather uh, during the tour. I want to emphasize that you cannot go into any unauthorized areas, lean out over any balconies or anything else and trying to get a good photograph. But get the best photograph you can, and we'll have a quick competition at the end to see what, or, what's the best or one. Or take a photo of an athlete. Yes, sorry, yes, you cannot take a photograph of any athletes that are working or, or uh, training in the center. Okay, so just that. And the second thing, what, uh, just tweet the best engineering fact that you learned today, either, either this morning or during the tour, and uh, there'll be a prize for the best one of those as well. Okay, I want to just uh, thank again Caroline, Owen and Dave, uh, our speakers this morning. As I said, we've organised ourselves into groups now and uh, should we be back here at about half past twelve. So thank you very much.